On February 19th, Microsoft unveiled this, the Majorana 1, a brand new type of quantum computer that Microsoft believes can completely change the game. The Majorana 1 is a topological quantum computer, relying on a new state of matter and a new approach to quantum computing that Microsoft believes will be the key to making quantum computers at scale, reliably, and predictably in the future. So how does it work and what does it mean? Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky, and this is 2 da Vinci. This video is brought to you by Odoo. The Majorana 1 is a combination of a couple of different things. First, the elusive Majorana particle, and also the topological quantum computer. These breakthroughs have been so remarkable that Microsoft published a paper in Nature explaining the breakthrough. Now we'll get to how all this works here in a minute, but just remember that quantum mechanics is about as unintuitive as science gets. I remember in college, I had a professor who quoted Richard Feynman saying, the key to understanding quantum mechanics is realizing you don't understand quantum mechanics. And I think I've made peace with that fact, and hopefully you can too. But that doesn't mean that we can't at least try to understand how this works and where the breakthroughs lie. We had the opportunity to chat with Dr. Chetan Nayak, a senior technical fellow heading up quantum hardware at Microsoft to explain some of these things and to see why we should be so excited. And we should be excited because Microsoft published a new roadmap to a 1 million qubit quantum computer stating that it could be here within the next 10 years. What is a topological quantum computer and how are they building it? At its heart, it's a quantum computer like many others and it uses qubits. Ordinary computer has a bit, which is a zero or one. A uh, quantum computer has what's called a qubit as a fundamental unit of information. And, and that can be a super, or what's called a quantum superposition of zero and one. So it can be kind of a little bit of both zero and one. It's not an analog computer where you get a continuous number that could be 0.3 or something. It's still zero or one, but you can have a quantum mechanical superposition like Schrodinger's cat being both dead and alive. And you know, for the most part, almost all ideas around quantum computing have involved very different technologies and very different just physical manifestations than classical computers. But it's also one of the really complex and hard to understand things that make quantum computers feel like sci-fi from a parallel timeline. Now, most people think of classical Newtonian physics as explaining the world at normal scales like us, airplanes, buses, laptops, and quantum mechanics for explaining the very, very small. But it turns out everything, our microphones, our computers, laptops, are all following the laws of quantum mechanics. It's not a separate realm, it's just that the quantum effects are so small that you can't see them at a normal scale and at normal temperatures. It's also what makes quantum computers so hard to make. Think about this example. Imagine if you suspected that you might have a rat in your house. Well, you might go looking for evidence, maybe rat droppings or ripped up insulation. To do that, you would need something like this, light. So you might go looking around and try to find evidence. But on the quantum scale, the photons of light that you're using to observe would change the outcome. And that's what makes it so difficult. So at the quantum scale, anything from a single stray atom hitting a qubit can make it collapse from its superposition state into just a zero or one. And that's what scientists call decoherence. Microsoft managed to make quantum bits encoded not in a single atom or an ion or in a photon of light like other approaches, but in a topology of a material, in its very shape, making them much more robust than normal qubits. As a software engineer, I can't help but wonder what it would be like to develop software for a quantum computer. Speaking of software, check this out. This is a custom website I built for us at Tuba Da Vinci in about 20 minutes using our sponsor, Odoo. Odoo is an all-in-one business operations software that offers a range of applications from CRM, sales, marketing, HR, accounting, inventory, point of sales, and even custom websites. Best of all, your first application is free for life, including unlimited hosting and support and a custom domain for one year. Here's my site so far, but I want to make a few changes. First, I don't like how big these video cards are. So let's shrink them down and let's add a border radius for a nice clean look. And let's update this image for technology while we're at it. Finally, let's add a contact us menu button and page so future sponsors and viewers can write to us. And since you're on the Odoo platform, user data like this can go straight into your own CRM platform for sales consulting or following up. So whether you're trying to start a new e-commerce business, sell courses, advertise your company or anything else, don't let technology be the thing holding you back and get started with Odoo today. You can get started for free with a website. And if your business takes off, you can just keep adding more features as you need it. Use our links in the description for the best deal. Huge thanks to Odoo and you. 
Now back to the show. This is a Mervius band. Yeah, I just took a piece of tape and uh, kind of, you know, twisted it and glued it together. And uh, what you can see is I can, I can stretch this, pull on it and do whatever. And actually the number of twists doesn't change, right? You can do a lot. Of, so, and if you think about that, it, the analogy there is you have a quantum state that similarly has a, a twist in it like this. And uh, that quantum, the, the presence or absence of a twist, uh, you might perturb that quantum state in various ways, the environment, there might be electromagnetic radiation, but it doesn't actually spoil the information. So there's certain types of information. That's what topology is. This is an example of topology, which is the number of twists in this band. Topology is very robust against, by definition, almost is robust against, you know, very small perturbations. And so um, the idea is, you know, that, that you, 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 find a, you find quantum states that have this kind of property and encode information in basically these twists in quantum states. Well, that's what a topological quantum computer does. And, and the, the catch is you have to find those states. <laughs> you know, you have to find a type of material that naturally wants to have states that have these kinds of properties in it. And that involves a lot of uh, solid state physics and engineering materials science and engineering to make those states a matter. But why does this matter so much? The Majorana 1 is only eight qubits and there are quantum computers today with hundreds of them. Well, it all comes down to the quality of the qubits. These topological qubits are much more stable and resilient than other types of qubits being explored. Other qubits are very sensitive to noise, so even a small atom passing by can cause decoherence and introduce errors in the quantum calculations. People figured out that they can correct these errors by adding redundancy, combining multiple physical qubits to correct the computations of one or few of them are hit by noise. These groups of physical qubits are called logical qubits and can have hundreds or even thousands of qubits to get error rates down low enough to be useful. So making a quantum computer with 100 qubits might in reality only have a single logical qubit for computation. So if you can make more stable physical qubits, you won't need as many physical qubits per logical qubit, so you can build very small quantum chips compared to other approaches. And that's the basis for their roadmap to make a 1 million qubit quantum computer. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the quantum computer is not going to be better than a classical computer in every use case. This is just another tool in our toolkit. A quantum computer, thanks to superposition and another quantum phenomenon called entanglement, works differently than classical computers. Picture this example. If you want to solve a maze, a classical computer has to sequentially try out every possible turn along the path to find the way through the maze and find the solution. It's like if you're walking down the maze in a first person view, you have to make hard decisions at every turn, left or right. But a quantum computer would be like flying a drone up high and seeing the entire maze from above and trying out every approach and every solution at the same time. This is what makes quantum computers so good at things like cracking passwords, for example. The key takeaway is that for certain types of problems, particularly optimization problems like finding the best arrangement of something or simulating quantum systems themselves, a quantum computer promises an exponential speed up. And the potential applications are staggering. First and foremost among those is any simulating anything having to do with quantum mechanics. So like you said, it's chemistry, it's materials, it's some aspects of biology. Let me give you some examples. Um, we would love to have some catalysts that could help with carbon capture. If we have catalysts to capture carbon out of the, help us capture carbon out of the atmosphere without using up a lot of energy. Because you know, capturing gases actually takes and and, and turning them through some chemical reaction uh, into something that you can then bury in the ground or use for something else. Um, that's it. That, that actually costs a lot of energy. That seems like a big one to me. Along those lines, uh, nitrogen fixation. So again, we, we pull nitro most of the atmosphere, most of the air that we breathe is nitrogen, right? We pull that nitrogen out of the air and put it into fertilizers. You know, it's really essential for growing the food that we eat. We'd love to have um, things that can break down microplastics. Again, I, you know, I look around and people sometimes think, well, oh, it's not going to help with like uh, social media and it's not going to help with gaming. Oh, it's just some niche thing that you're only going to worry about for like chemistry and materials. And then you say, well, yeah, but you know, 96% of all manufactured goods are involve chemistry and materials. So that's like everything. So, you know, in that sense, uh, I, for me, at least, it's really exciting. But that's only half the story. The name Majorana 1 comes from the Majorana particle, which is a fascinating concept in physics with unique properties that make them potentially very useful for quantum computers. 
My Rana particles belong to a class of particles called fermions, which are the fundamental building blocks of matter, like electrons, protons, and neutrons. The unique part about the Majorana particle, though, is that they are their own antiparticle. Normally, every particle has an antiparticle with the opposite charge, i.e. an electron has a negative charge and its antiparticle, the positron, has a positive charge. The opposite happens for protons and antiprotons. When a particle and its antiparticle meet, they annihilate each other. But a Majorana particle is both the particle and the antiparticle, meaning it could, in theory, annihilate itself. Ettore Majorana, a Italian physicist, first proposed the existence of these particles all the way back in 1937. Physicists have been searching for Majorana particles in various forms ever since. In 2012, the first potential evidence of Majorana particles as quasi-particles or collective excitations that behave like particles was observed in experiments. And now Microsoft designed a new state of matter, a custom built material with a special topological wire that behaves like a Majorana. Now this self annihilation property of Majorana particles might seem strange, but that's what makes Majorana particles so interesting for quantum computing. And they're less susceptible to disturbances that cause errors in traditional quantum computations. Remember when I said about the Feynman quote about not understanding quantum mechanics, I think that starts to apply here. But Here's the simple breakdown. Each qubit in Majorana 1 is formed by a pair of MZMs located at the ends of a superconducting nanowire. This makes a topological qubit, which is inherently more stable than other types of qubits because the quantum information is encoded at both ends of the wire. The information isn't localized in a single place like it would be with an electron or a photon. Instead, it's distributed across an entire wire, and so there's less likelihood of losing the quantum information. It remains coherent. In a classical computer, you control input bits and logic gates by simply applying a voltage to a transistor. Most quantum computers rely on a very precise analog signal to control and manipulate individual qubits. This makes the process exponentially harder as you add more qubits. But Majorana 1, instead of directly manipulating the MZMs with analog signals, it uses a sequence of measurements on nearby qubits to indirectly control their state and perform quantum operations. This involves coupling the nanowire to quantum dots and measuring changes in their electrical properties. By strategically performing measurements on neighboring qubits, they can effectively braid the Majorana particles around each other. This braiding process alters the quantum state of the qubits and allows for the implementation of quantum logic gates. Measurement-based braiding simplifies the control process compared to traditional methods that require a precise analog signal. Topological qubits are inherently more stable than other types of qubits, making them less susceptible to errors during manipulation. This approach is well suited for scaling up to larger numbers of qubits, which is a key goal for Microsoft. Microsoft says their topological qubits show low error rates around 1%. Now, this is a lot better than other types of qubits. For example, the error rate for a group of four physical neutral atom qubits from a company Atom was around 42%. Now, 1% error rate sounds pretty good, but is it good enough? No. We need error rates to drop below one every billion in order to make a practical quantum computer. And this is why people are so excited about Majorana 1. With lower error rates, there's less qubits you have to group together into logical qubits to achieve the high level of success. And seeing how quantum computing has been progressing, I don't think it's crazy to think that we could pull off a million qubit quantum computer in the next decade. And that's because the number of qubits per processor is growing exponentially. In just three years, we've gone from 76 quantum bits per processor to over 1200 in 2023. Google's Willow processor has already been breaking records. Willow can solve a complex computing challenge in five minutes that would take a supercomputer 10 septillion years to solve. That's 10 to the 25 years. For all the chemists out there, that's 17 moles of years. And to everyone else, that's 730 trillion times the age of the universe shortened down to just five minutes. And that, of course, is why we're pursuing quantum computers. So a new state of matter Semiconductor, superconductor, sandwiches and a nanowire, topological qubits, and Majorana particles. There is so much to be excited about, and this is just the beginning. So I think Microsoft is well on their way to being a leader in this space, and I can't wait to see what comes next. All right, that is a quick look at the Majorana 1. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like our videos. I'm Ricky Tuba Da Vinci, and until next week, check out this video.